Hi, everyone. So today we're going to be uh, looking at the new features in MAP360 version 3.0. So uh, we're going to start today. This is going to be a 12-minute session. I'm sorry for the late start. I had a little issues getting on uh, GoToWebinar this morning. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So today we're going to cover some new and improved features in version 3.0. So some of these include our new crush analysis tool, our dynamic text labels, group and ungroup, the IntelliCAD tool palette, our microsurvey usage analytics program, and our improved advanced line types and improved trajectory analysis. So we've got a lot to cover today, so we're just going to dive right in. So when you first install version 3.0, you'll be asked to participate in our analytics program. This program will just help us understand how our software is being used uh, by all of you, and you can continue to improve our products. So all this data is confidential, and you can opt in or out at any time. So the tools palette can be opened, and this is part of IntelliCAD's uh, update, and we've got improved walls, doors, and windows. So let's jump right into the crush analysis tool. We can use crush measurements to compare a measured damaged vehicle to an undamaged exemplar to provide input for crush cal energy calculations. So this can be used with point cloud data, uh, a symbol an, over an image, or if an investigator has uh, crush measurements, they can also use this tool just to obtain the results. So we're going to open up an LGS file for this example. And this is a Crown Victoria that was damaged by colliding with a telephone pole. We can see that right here on the left side. So first, uh, let's import the undamaged exemplar. So I'm going to go to the symbols librarian and insert the Crown Victoria. And this will come in to scale. So I'm just going to change the color of this symbol here. And we'll change it to uh, blue. So next, we're also going to insert the outline of a Crown Vic from the specs database. So we'll go to our scene analysis, and we'll browse down to 1999 Ford and then the Crown Vic. And we're going to want to note down the weight because we'll need that for our calculation. So in the insert dialog, I'll use passenger car and include all of these, and we'll name it Crown Vic. So I'll insert this, and that will come into scale as well. So I'm going to switch to my center line layer and I'm going to draw a line indicating the center of these symbols. So I'll select the line and just extend it, and I'm going to snap perpendicular to the front and to the rear. And because these vehicles are both the same scale, I can select uh, the line and copy it. Copy it from the endpoint to the midpoint of the other symbol. We can see that lines up perfectly. And since uh, they're both rotated the same way and the same scale, I can just do a, a simple move command from the front of the center line to the front of the center line on the other outline. So now we can see that lines up perfectly in the front and the back. So let's use the new group feature in 3.0. We'll select all of these items and hit group. So now if you select one of the items, they're all selected. 
you could easily ungroup them as well so they'll become their individual items again. So next let's look at the point cloud. We're going to want to establish a center line for this damaged vehicle because we can see it kind of did a bit of a banana. So we're going to draw a line between the center of the wheel hubs and then I'm going to use a rotate cursor using this line that's going to rotate the cursor to align with the vehicle and then I turn on draw orthogonal so we'll zoom in on the front here and we're going to draw a line from the front center of the point cloud vehicle straight back with that orthogonal mode turned on and that is our center line for the vehicle. So next for our crush analysis, we just want to isolate kind of a crush line um, on this vehicle. So I'm going to use slice in the Z axis. And I'm going to use my node snaps and just pick above and below the slice of the point cloud that I want to use for the analysis. So at this point, we could outline the point cloud and overlay the outline, or in this case, we're just going to use the point cloud for the crush analysis. So let's switch uh, to my crush layer so we can overlay this symbol on top of the uh, point cloud and then do our crush measurements using the undamaged with the damaged. So before I do that, I'm just going to turn off orthogonal and reset the cursor and we'll just align them first. So I'll use a quick align. Uh, that's not going to change the scale. So I'll just want to make sure I select the front of the vehicle first and then the front of the point cloud vehicle first. So that's going to be the anchor. So now when I pick the back, it's going to it's going to align the back point with the extension line for the center line, but it's not going to scale it to the end of that. So we can see that lines up pretty good here. And now we can start doing our crush analysis. So now I'll change my layer to crush and we'll select crush analysis. So this is going to give us a warning that it's still being validated. And for side impacts, uh, we're going to select the C1 to C6 from the back to the front. And you can see that the measurements go the wrong direction. So we'll just select this arrow to flip those. So now you can use the dialog and input your values here or we can use these arrows and adjust um, that red line where it meets with the point cloud crush. So we'll just adjust these out to the crush profile. Uh, that one looks pretty good and we'll leave it like that. So now we can use this arrow grip to change the PDOF and then we'll move on to the dialog to input the other um, input values. So we'll jot down the weight we got from the specs database. And uh, for stiffness values, I'm using a generic values I obtained from an SAE paper for uh, category classes for side impact. So we can see the results are automatically calculated and we can create a report. So I'll just type in crown bic at the left side, call it one, two, three. Uh, Kelowna will be our location for the incident and drawn by myself. We'll check the box to show our calculations. And if you would like, you can add images such as 
the uh, post and pre and post impact or crush pictures. And then we can save it as PDF. It will automatically open for you. And we have a nice little report created. So we have our input data, our results, our crush equations. And then at the very bottom, it shows a screenshot of that crush profile. So if you close the dialog and you'd like to reopen it to make some changes, um, first of all, you can double click on the crush entity and it will reopen that dialog for you. You can also select it and then select the command from the ribbon. And if you want a new crush, just make sure nothing's selected when you run the command from the ribbon. So lastly, let's look at adding a dynamic text label. So it will indicate the year and the model of the vehicle. So once you select it, you just pick anywhere in the drawing area. I'm just gonna adjust my text height. And then this is a 1999 Crown Victoria. And select the grip to move it away and it leaves behind a leader line. So as you rotate in your scene, uh, the text will actually dynamically update to face the camera. So don't forget to try out the improved features in 3.0. We have our advanced line types that now follow the elevation changes and also our trajectory cones, which can now be changed with their grips after they've been drawn. So these are a couple great features to try out. And um, that was all we had for our uh, presentation today. Our next Lunch and Learn will be on the Jetstream Viewer Tips and Tricks, and that will be held on September 25th by Ken Jones. So there is going to be a registration link posted. Um, it's not currently posted at this time, so we'll have that up as soon as we can. And um, also for the new features, one of the things I wanted to mention today was uh, the crush tool, how we are having it validated. If anyone um, would like to assist with our validation process, please let us know. We're always looking for uh, customers to test it out and validate for us. And um, I also wanted to um, ask if anyone has suggestions for future Lunch and Learn webinars to please send them my way because we're always looking for um, interesting and captivating presentations. So this webinar will be, it has been recorded and it will be posted if you'd like to review it again or go through the workflow. And if you have any questions, please let me know. So I have how Lee on the line with me today. So if there are any questions or any that have come in during the webinar, he will be asking those and we can get those answered for you. All right, well, that is all for today. So if anyone has any questions, please don't hesitate to contact myself and I would be happy to answer those for you. Have a great day, guys.